the closed wings explore the mystery of the Incarnation. The Archangel Gabriel announces the conception to the Virgin Mary. Hail thou that art full of grace, the Lord is with thee. And she answers him, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Mary gazes inwards, as though dissolved in rapture in the midst of prayer. The crossed hands against her breast speak of a soul closed to all that is not God. Who am I that I should build him a house? The book open beside her reads. In the niche behind her, a pewter pitcher and an empty copper candlestick glow with light. On the shelf above, two much read books lean over the edge beside an ivory bottle. Is she like the two rounded vessels next to her, now being filled with the Spirit? Powers of God, the vision of God, as it is written in the open book below. The angel points upwards to God and holds the white lily of purity in his hand. A small cross rises from the diadem on his brow, foreshadowing what is to come. Golden words flow between them. Ave, gracia plena. Dominus tecum. The angel's message is visible to us, but her reply is written in reverse and upside down. So inward that only she and the dove of the Holy Spirit hovering above her head may read it. Yet angel and virgin, kneeling at opposite sides of this spare, quiet room, are drawn almost as mirror images of each other. Their elaborately draped robes are so similar in colour, fold and texture as to keep us continually moving back and forth between them, as though they were a single essence in dual form, or different dimensions of one reality. The angel's soft feathered wings and the wings of the overshadowing dove echo each other. The angel looks at Mary directly, but she does not need to look at him to see him. Is the angel then the deeper knowing of the Virgin, the outer reflection of her inward grace? Sunlight streams in through the arched window behind her, lighting up a carafe of water on the windowsill. One ray of light falls upon the wall as a thin vertical streak and glances off the window seat, where it takes the form of a double candle as though one candle is mirrored by another in the dark wall behind it, the one light becoming two. Does this play of light, set so close to Mary in her vision, offer a way to think about Annunciation? Is her soul becoming a reflection of eternal light?
The space between angel and virgin is empty, the wooden floor in the centre bare. On the side of the angel, a window opens onto the world beyond. On the side of the virgin, a white linen towel hangs in place of a window, enclosing her in interior space. Inside the shallow niche, with its ecclesiastical trefoil window, the act of washing becomes transparent to a state of mind. A copper water vessel hangs from a chain above a copper basin, both gleaming with light. Water and light together speak of the pure heart of the Virgin, the washing away of sin bringing illumination. Daily life is brought into the room through the large Romanesque window, divided in two by a double black marble column. The sun is high in a pale blue sky, shadows falling on the street below. Looking through the window, we see not Nazareth, but a bustling Flemish town. There are half-timbered houses with high gables, a street leading to a circular gate in the town wall, a spire, birds flying, people walking, talking in a doorway at a window, passing each other in the street. Wild geese fly in formation overhead. Annunciation, then, can happen anywhere, at any time, in Bruges or in late afternoon, or when a painter is gazing out of his window at the city below. <laughs> 